Hey Vinyl Community, Jeff here and I am jumping on a contest in this time around. This is for Alex over Beer and Vinyl and um, he is doing a contest. I'll let you go to his channel to get all the rules because I know that I've got more than I need to be showing for this and so I don't want to make this too terribly long. But in a nutshell, the uh, idea is to, sh to pick a year, just a year, of what you would consider uh, the best year of music now it can be looked at as he mentioned as just objectively you could look at it and say this is just in my opinion the best year or emotionally and i am approaching it emotionally as to the band the, the year that is most nostalgic to me so um and you know of course you know everything about music is subjective so obviously everybody has different opinions but obviously if you disagree with me, you're wrong, and you just have to deal with it, and we'll forgive you. But you know, we'll move on with that. So yeah, I looked through my years, and it was a it was a weighty task to do. Uh, I was able to do that with my digital music collection, and so I was able to tell you know the majority of stuff that I had year by year. And I will say, obviously, I'm an '80s boy, and so I leaned heavily into the '80s, and I ended up landing on 1981. It was a toss-up between 81, 83, and 84 were really strong years. Uh, and it just be, you know, became really tough in there. But the reason I chose 81 is because at that point in my life, I was really starting to discover a lot of music. When I started pulling these albums, I realized that the majority of these albums were entry albums from the bands that I got into. I was discovering a lot of bands in 81 that have later you know, just stuck with me. So 81 was like a real pivotal year. There was a lot of, you know, when it comes to like 80s rock and metal, 83 was a huge year. Um, but it kind of all started in 81, which is so many, in my mind, classic releases that really opened the door for me. So uh, let's go in this. I'm just going to breeze through them, maybe make some comments, but I've got more. He wanted to show a handful, four, five, five, ten. I probably got 20. Anyway, I'm starting. These are alphabetical, not in favorite order. For those about the rock, obviously Back in Black is probably where I discovered the band. I don't think I was much into them in their, you know, Bon Scott years. But this album was very... And the other thing about 81 is, you know, MTV was booming. And so lots of videos for these albums. They became really more ingrained into it. So they played this type of stuff all the time. So for those about the rock, absolutely still one of my favorite, you know, this and Back in Black are just absolutely two great favorites mob rules by black sabbath i'm pretty sure this is around the time i discovered them i was not much of a into the aussie years everybody knows the classics but when i started buying music myself in the late 70s i didn't get into black sabbath very much it wasn't until around 81 when i discovered them i don't even think i discovered them on the heaven and hell i'm pretty sure mob rules is one of the ones and if it wasn't the one i discovered them on it's the one that got tons of play for me back in the day same with uh, Def Leppard, High and Dry. I'm pretty sure this is where I discovered them. I don't think I was aware of One Through the Night until around later this time. But um, great album, solid album, still one of my favorites. I love the first two albums because they're just raw, energetic, hard rocking. Pyromania, of course, bringing it all around to uh, greatness. And here's a weird one for you, of course. At the time, I did not like Duran Duran in the, in the 81 era, but have grown to you know appreciate this and to me this is a very pivotal album uh, obviously previous albums were there but this is the one that really took them and i think mtv had a lot to do with that this is the one that really just blew them up and made them a favorite and so that is a great album same with this foreigner four foreigner has a lot of great hits that all came before this but this is the one i think that i really discovered them on with the radio hits and everything and so still one of my go-to records of the day because I just think I listened to this one the most because this is the one that I really had at that time. Iron Maiden Killers, again, I discovered them around here. I remember having this album up on my wall because I thought the artwork was so cool. I remember sitting down and drawing this. I used to be one of those guys that would draw a lot of things. I drew this cover, you know, tried to sketch it out like that. And this album was very, you know, very much uh, a part when, of me when it came out. And then, of course, on and the bigger, better things that I kept going with. Judas Priest, uh, I, I'm not, either, I, I'm pretty sure I might have discovered him here. I know Screaming for Vengeance, these two albums in, in the day might have been the only two Judas Priest albums I had at that time. So it was one of these two albums where I discovered them. But these two albums 
were the key ones I had. I really don't know if I had a lot of the earlier stuff at that time. I do now, but absolutely still one of my favorites there. Kicks, the first album. This is when I really discovered them. And this and Cool Kids to this day are still ingrained in me because I had those and played those the most. And then later, of course, they went on in the 80s and became bigger commercially. Uh, but this is where I cut my teeth. This is where I played them the most. And I still love these albums to this day. And this is our first one. And it's quirky and different, but lovable. Crocus Hardware. I don't think, I think I discovered them shortly after this. Um, but these couple albums before Headhunter, Headhunter is the one that really broke them, I think, and be, they became just a staple. And, and again, I think a lot of it had to do with videos and stuff. But, but before that came out, we were aware of, you know, of hardware and one vice at a time and things like that. So we had a few of those albums that came out right before the major release of Headhunter. So it's still one of my favorites there. And I talked about this in one of my, uh, the first one you never forget, and that's the second Michael Shanker album. This is where I discovered Michael Shanker, was the second album, and then later picked up the first. Fell in love with it. This album still top, top for me. And so it's, uh, you know, it's one of those nostalgic ingrained to me, as is the same year one, uh, one Night Budokan released live album. These two albums, I think, it, for the longest time were probably... Uh, you know, the only two Michael Shanker albums that I spun back in the day the most. Um, and so, yeah, absolutely one of my favorite all-time live albums. I love that they reissued this on CD with all the remasters and stuff, you know, a handful of years ago, 10, 15, 20 years ago. And they included two bonus tracks, that a drum solo and another song, I forget, the, that weren't on the original. So that was great. And, of course, this is where I would say is the breach, the breakthrough of uh, what we later deemed to be the, the hair metal time. And that's Motley Crue's first album uh, that we discovered back in the day. I remember when this, you know, came out. Our record company carried a lot of this, uh, what they called, well, this was on a major label. Of course, we didn't see the leather edition in the day, but they carried this new music that came out. And so uh, I, you know, grabbed this up and became an absolute favorite. I don't think we noticed it as being something totally different, but of course it, it really led the way in my mind for a lot of the bands that followed in the years that, you know, shortly followed after that from the California scene. Diver of Madman by Ozzy Osbourne. I'm pretty sure this is where I broke into him. I don't think Blizzard of Oz was on my radar. They both, both albums became, you know, very pivotal in my collection and very much, you know, a, a must have. But I'm thinking it was by the time this was released that I finally, you know, discovered the Ozzy years. And again, didn't really pay attention to much of the Black Sabbath catalog until after these days. Uh, Raven, Rock Until You Drop, Raven's first album, Plop. Now, I admit I did not discover them at this time when this album came out. I did not discover them, discover them until All For One. It was in this independent releases import releases into my record store and I grabbed that but then we went back and picked up the previous albums at that point but this is where it started one of the early new wave of British heavy metal type acts that came out of there with the you know a little more aggressive hitting uh sound than some of the others so yes all right riot fire down under still absolutely one of my favorite albums great great album this and restless breed are the two that for me were the pivotal albums in the collection and this one, they were two different singers, but to me, at the time, they were just connected at the hip. Great album, still to this day, love this album. But this is where I discovered Riot. It wasn't in the earlier albums until we went back and picked them up. That and Restless Breed. And of course, Moving Pictures Rush. Now, I, again, I was one of those who wasn't, uh, didn't really acknowledge or know much about Rush. Now, my cousin, who's about two years older than me, Huge Rush fan, so he I heard a lot of it from him. But this is the one that I first cut my teeth on getting into. Of course, Tom Sawyer and all the big hits from this album. Um, this and uh, Permanent Waves were the two in my collection in the day, but I'm pretty sure it was probably post this album when I finally did discover them and really got into them. Absolutely the first Saxon album I ever had, Denim and Leather, still a high water mark for me. I know this song's back and forth. Love this album still, and it was this album that really broke into my collection. So absolutely love that. 
Uh, Sammy Hagar is Stanley Hampton. This is his first album on a major label after the Capitol years, and I don't think I discovered him until around this time, maybe even as late as Three Like Box. Uh, one of these first two uh, albums when he, you know, changed labels were when I really broke into him, but, you know, this has got big hits and love this stuff, and so uh, this is still one of my favorites to the day. Allied Forces, again, I don't think I knew much about them until around this time. Videos and things along that line brought us to our attention. Um, and we just discovered the greatness that is the Canadian band Triumph. And Van Halen is, un the uh, again, videos. But I'm pretty sure when I discovered them, it was around Women and Children First or this album. And I'm pretty sure, I think, I saw this tour. I keep... I have to talk to my friend because we went to the, all the concerts together and either I went to the tour or I just had a t-shirt from the tour because I remember seeing him in, in, I know I saw him in 84, but I'm pretty sure I sat back further and saw this, but you know, memory is escaping me. Still one of my favorite albums, just absolutely this. And like I say, the, the, uh, to me, this and women and children first are two absolute top albums that just have you know they don't have a huge bunch of hits on them but to me every song is just ingrained in me as a hit so there you go check out alex's contest down below oh and alex by the way uh, i went out of town last week and i know you were in town close enough to me to where i would should have mentioned i would have liked to have gotten together but you know we should have done something together i don't know how long you were in town i don't you know but i know i went out of town the weekend that i think you were probably in town and so I'm sorry I missed out on that. We could have got together, maybe shot a little video and had some fun. But that's it for this one. Check out this contest. Join, jump on board. It's going to be going on for a little while. And we'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.